If we want to take the derivative of a product of two functions, we have the product rule of differentiation. It states that the derivative of the product is equal to the derivative of the first times the second, just the plain old second function, plus the derivative of the second function times our first function. And that's good because a lot of the time we'll have the derivative of a product of two functions, but what happens if we have a product of three or four or even more functions? Um, a lot of you may know that the derivative, um, so actually before I continue, um, we'll, we'll, we'll refer to these functions by f1, f2, f3, um, because we're going to have a lot more than just two functions. We're going to have like n amount of functions. That's what this video is about. We're going to generalize the product rule. So it's not going to be f and g and h and all that. It's going to be f1, f2, f3. So just so you know. Um, and assume that they're all products of, or functions of x, because I'm not going to write of x every time. So if we have the derivative of, we have f1 times f2 times f3. These are all functions of x. Okay, that's going to be f prime, oops, that's, that's a pretty bad f. That's going to be the derivative of the first function times, or actually first, times the second times the third, plus the derivative, you can do f1 times the derivative of f2, f2 prime uh, times f3, plus f1, f2, and then f3 prime. So you can see there's like a pattern. You, you add up like one, two, and three. It's gonna be all of the functions, except one of them is going to be, um, you know, the derivative. And so this actually, if you keep doing this n times, it actually comes out with a really interesting result. Um, and it's a very, it's kind of like an elegant little answer. And it's really easy to see. So let's try to find, let's try to derive this. So assuming this pattern is true, which it is, uh, if we have four functions, we'll just have f prime 1, f2, f3, f4, uh, f1, f2, prime, f3, f4, and so on until we get all the way to the end. So we have three terms because we have three functions, and in each function, or in, in each term, we have all of our functions except one of them is the derivative, and the, the one which is the derivative that corresponds with the number of the terms. So this is the first term, and our first function is the derivative. Second term, second function is the derivative. Well, if we have n terms, our nth function will be the derivative. So let's let's see how we can do this. Well, let's let's see first that it's a sum, right? It's going to be the sum of something. And we can also see that it's going to be the product of something. So we're going to have a sum and a product. That's, that's a very bad pie. <laughs> it's going to be a sum and a product. And it looks like it's going to be the sum of a product because we have these products that we're going to find and then we're going to sum them all up. So it's going to be like a, like that. So let, let's actually go about finding this. Let me just erase that. So we're going to have a sum to start. Actually, let, let, let me do it in black. I think if we did this in black, it'll be a little better. So um, we're going to take the sum. All right. And we're going to start. Uh, so we're going to say this is n equals, well, we're, we'll start at 1 all the way to k. Let's say that we have k terms. Uh, actually, let me, let, me, let me write this first. This is going to be the derivative of a product of functions, which we'll use our pi notation, or capital pi. Uh, we'll start at index i. i equals 1 to k of our f i's and I'll just write of x equals that. So, so i is not the square root of negative 1, I just need another index. Um, and so our f1 times our f2 times our f3 and so on, all the way up to k terms. So uh, since we have k functions, we're going to have k terms, so it's going to be the same. So we're going to sum up all of these. Well, you can't really just write oh, it's going to be, you know, the sum of the product of all the functions. That would be really easy. All that would be is f1, f2, f3, plus f2, f1, f2, f3, and so on, k times. And it's really not that impressive. Um, what we really need to do is we need to find, um, we're going to take the product. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the parentheses. We're going to take the product. Okay, so we're going to start with m. m equals 1 all the way to k. Okay. The product of our number of functions. So this is just f m 
of x, okay? And so what does this mean? Okay, so this is the sum of all of the products. That's what I just said. It would be f1, f2, f3, plus f1, f2, f3, k times, which we don't really want. What we want is we want to take this. Okay, so I'm going to actually, um, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to close that parentheses, and I'm going to keep going because this is still part of the sum. We're going to take that term that we have, and we're going to divide out that specific term. And so I'll see what I mean. I'll show you what I mean. Um, so we're going to have a fraction here, and I'm going to divide out that term. So it's going to be f sub n of x, which is this. So what this means is we're going to take the product of our functions, and we're going to divide out that function, so that, that function at that term. So in this case, it'd be, it would be f1, f2, f3, but we're going to divide out our f1. So really, we're just left with f2, f3. And then we have f1, f2, f3. We're going to, since it's the second term, we're going to divide out that f2. And so, you know, we'll just be left with f1, f3. And then here it would be f1, f2, because we divide out that f3. And so instead, we're going to replace it with the derivative of that function. So f fn prime of x. And this is actually our entire product rule, and I'm going to rearrange it in a second. Because um, really, so we're replacing, we're, we're dividing out that function, that the term, the number, the number of the term, and then we're going to replace it with its derivative of that function. So um, we can actually rearrange this. Um, so I'm going to put a equal sign there. So this is going to start at n equals 1 to k of, and I'm just going to put this in front, so fn prime of x over fn of x. And we actually don't need uh, to include the pi in the actual sum, because I'll show you why. I'm going to start m equals 1 to k of f sub m of x, right? So we actually don't need to put uh, parentheses because with this pi, we can kind of factor everything out because um, you can see this is just going to be this itself. Uh, we're just going to be like taking one of these, right? Uh, and then we're going to basically multiply it all out. Um, or we're we're going to divide out all of these. So, I mean, you could put a parentheses. Uh, it's not really necessary. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, that's the generalized product rule. Um, I'm probably going to do a generalized quotient rule video, but that'll just be a lot more work. I do have a generalized chain rule video, which I'll do um, in the next episode, or maybe I already posted it. I don't know. But yeah, uh, that's, that's a lot of interesting things. So we have the derivative of the product of functions equals to the sum of all of these times the product of that uh, you know, product of functions. Um, so yeah. That's basically it, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye.